So you want to start a Roll20 campaign, and you want to know how to run it. All right, that's fine. I'm here to help you. So first, get a Chrome tab open. Uh, I don't want this one. I had another Joseph McCarthy. Okay, well, that's probably... I didn't... I, this was here when I got... Um, just Ron Paul. Rand Paul? This is not... I, I didn't search any of So for example, we're gonna be using the Roll20 purchased Storm King's Thunder. This is freshly purchased. And if we go over to the handouts tab up here in the top right, you can see we've got six blank character sheets. I went ahead and made these. It was fairly simple. You just make one new character, name it blank character, and then right click, click duplicate. You're gonna to wanna to drag them from all the way down here at the bottom and bring them up. And then you just rename them to one, two, blah, 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 whatever. I don't actually know how to count. Now, since I am a super duper premium subscriber. I really don't know. I use daddy's credit card. If you boot these up and go to character sheet, the character mancer is fully accessible for all of my players. That said, we're not really talking about the character mancer today. We're really talking about how to interact with your new campaign. So as you can see, if I open up these little tabs over here, you can expand all of these to your handouts. So let's talk about interacting with tokens. It is really important that you make your life much easier and use the VTT Enhancement Suite. Now this is a Chrome extension or a Firefox extension. I, I don't know who you are or what you worship. The thing about VTT though is in September, it was issued a takedown notice. Now that doesn't mean you can't still find it. There is a GitHub link that still has it up and there is a full list of instructions on how to add it. Once you've got the extension up and running, you have a lot of quality of life updates. Namely, it makes the map interface a lot easier to work with. So in my case, I will click the page toolbar and I can drag this little red tab to force the players to a particular page. If I navigate just to blank battle map, the rest of the players are still gonna be looking at the loading screen. So I need to drag this down and now they're on the blank battle map. Once you're on a map, you have different layers to interact with. You go over here, this will put me on the map layer. Now this allows me to move around the, what is normally a static piece of background scenery. It's not a token, it's not a set piece like a barrel that has the chance of moving around. Let's use a token for example. Now I'm gonna to need to find a specific one. I'm gonna look for a goblin. So I'm going to go down to NPCs, open up the monsters folder, and who the f has time to look through all of that? Let's go up to the search tab here, goblin, bam. So I drag that guy out. Now, as you can see right now, this goblin is set up to have a little health bar. Your players will not see the number, and in fact, right now, they may not even see the health bar. So how do we make sure that we know we're fighting a goblin and we can see its health bar? Let's click on it, uh, hold shift, double click. This is a shortcut to open up its character sheet, which if we go right here, we have access to all of these built-in macros. Let's swing over to token editor. Now to make sure that we can see its health bar and its name, all we have to do is, like I said, go to token editor, go down to name, bar number one, update default token, and update all. Click OK. And now every time a goblin appears in the game, whether you drag it on or it's already been placed on a pre-built map, its name and health bar will be visible. When the goblin takes damage, for example, let's say it just took two damage. Oh, fuck. I just click the screen number, minus two. Bam. Now, unfortunately, as far as I can tell, the only way to ensure that every encounter has an enemy with a HP bar and a name is to one by one, you have to go through every token, be that NPCs, monsters, so on and so forth. Token editor. Bam, 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 in that order. It can be kind of grueling, but it's one of those campaign prep things that you just kind of have to do. So I know a lot of people will look at a token, look at the square, they say, okay, well, these are five foot squares, a goblin can go, oh, what, can it go like 30 feet? So I'm gonna go one, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and move like that. Now, the easier way to do that is to pick up the token, click the Q key, and now I've got that ruler built in. But of course, I'm probably not moving in a straight line, so I could go, say, 10 feet, click Q again, and now I've added a point of turning. So he goes 10 feet that way. He goes another 10 feet that way. Click Q. If you want to show a thing to someone, for example, now I want to show somebody this because it's linked in a handout. Okay, so I'll click show to players. Now on everybody's screen, this little guy pops up. And if they want to find it in their journals, they can now have a link to that accessible. Now let's say you need to link something in a handout. 
Now, you're basically just copy pasting the name of the picture handout in between brackets, which if we go down here, we can see that's just what's called handout, colon, space, air elemental. I don't know if it's case sensitive. It doesn't hurt to match it up though. And so if I save changes, bam. And like I said, you just gotta click show players and then I'll give it to them. And if you're looking for rules, clarifications, items to give to your players, all of that can be included right here in the compendium tab. You can search for anything from a monster, like for example, goblin. And I can pull a goblin right out of that and onto the screen. Alternatively, if I'm looking for rules on grappling. Look at that, combat, grappling. These cannot be shown to players, unfortunately, but you can tell them to look up the same thing you've looked up if you're looking to prove that you're not making shit up. And if you wanna add an item to someone's inventory, show them a treasure that they just found, we can look up, for example, the amulets of health. And we just click and drag that out. And this is a item that maybe they found at the end of a dungeon. You can say, oh, you find an amulet of health and you click show to players. Now everybody knows what an amulet of health is. They can decide whether or not they want it. And they themselves can search amulet of health, click and drag it onto their roll 20 character sheet. And it'll add it right to it. For this case, I'm assuming that you have my level of subscription, which gives you access to API scripting. API scripts are handy little things that basically, it's, it's sort of like mods. It's sort of like coding mods that you're adding into your campaign. Things that are a little extra than the features you get from being a certain level subscriber at Roll20. One that we're gonna talk about that is a huge lifesaver is group initiative. So how do you set up group initiative? It's pretty simple. What we want to do is type group in it. And then we want to copy paste this line, which I will have in the description. And then we want to paste this new line, which will also be in the description. And bada bing bada boom. Assuming your characters have their character sheets set up in roll 20, so their tokens correspond to a character sheet that has a dex modifier that is accurate, this will track initiative for you. We're using monsters as an example. Why don't we get goblin? and goblin boss. Now uh, why don't we get two goblins? This is getting out of hand. So go up to the macros bar, which is here to the right of the jukebox. Click add. And it doesn't matter what you want to name this, I went with roll for initiative. And under actions, you want to put the following. Pretty simple. We want to make sure that's in the macro quick bar. It doesn't hurt to have this command as well. Clear initiative. We'll see why in a minute. You have to be on whatever layer the token is attached to in order to roll for it. But in the past where it was clicking each individual thing and going to its initiative thing and doing that for each and every token, instead what we have is highlight, roll for initiative, bam. It rolls it, it automatically sorts it, it is a lifesaver. Now, you can go ahead and clear initiative before the next combat, and that's that. Another handy one that I've installed is called Torch. It's fairly simple, but let's use another goblin as an example. And let's turn off global illumination for this example. As we can see, this goblin can see pretty well in the dark. Let's assume that it can't by turning off its dark vision. Uh-oh, now it's in the dark, it can't see shit. So, we're gonna add a macro, called torch and it's just as simple as exclamation point torch save add to that quick bar and while we're at it why don't we add one called snuff so now if i click my goblin here and i click torch oh okay it has applied the lighting settings so that it has bright and dim light corresponding to a torch and when i want to turn that torch out like for example, if he drops it in water, douses it if he hears enemies coming, I click snuff and he's back in the dark. So since we're premium subscribers and we have access to this pre-built map pack, let's go ahead and look at dynamic lighting. To make sure that everything's working fine with dynamic lighting and fog of war, you wanna to go to each map, open the settings wheel, 
and then scroll down. We don't want fog of war, we want advanced fog of war. And then when we turn on dynamic lighting, we want to turn on three of these top settings. Enforce line of sight, making sure that each token can only see what it is supposed to. If you leave this unchecked, players will be able to see through the eyes of other tokens, like a goblin that's somewhere halfway across the map. Update only on drop. This increases performance, and it stops players from picking up their token and dragging it around a corner, not actually using any of their movement, just saying, oh, I'm just moving it around, giving them full ease of access to view around corners and past barriers and things like that. Speaking of looking through walls or around corners, turn on restrict movement to make sure that they can't go through doors or dynamic lighting walls. Global illumination is entirely up to you. I have found that in some maps, it can really chug performance. In other maps, it's indispensable. Global illumination basically treats it like there is a massive sun above the map and nothing is in shadows. Uh, you really don't have to worry about dark vision characters or lighting torches or anything like that. As we can see, this is what it's going to look like when you're running a pre-built game. You'll have letters that correspond to the different rooms to help you describe to your players what they're looking at, as well as know which area of the building they're actually in. But something you're also in control of is the ability to open up new lines of sight and move players through doors, walls, and so on. So to do that, this is where we go down to dynamic lighting. Now, when I pull up this menu, we can see a lot of multicolored lines. Uh, the blue ones in this case indicate walls, the orange ones indicate doors. So if a player straddles on up, and we'll use Donovich here as an example. If a player straddles on up to a door and they say, well, I would like to go through that door. Because from their perspective, they just see the boxed in area that they're in. They cannot see through any of these lines. To get them out, we just click and drag as small as we can to get over that little door. And then I just like to do a little, use the arrow keys to move it up, down, left and right, whichever gets it out of the way without creating a new line of sight blockage. Alternatively, if you don't think you're going to be kind of coming back and forth and using this door again, you can just go all out and delete it with the delete key. Now, he is free to go in and out of this door. And finally, let's talk about music. If we go up to manage audio, as we see in a blank campaign, I have nothing. But I've run other games in the past, so my Roll20 library has a pretty expansive list of music that I've added in. Let's click on tracks, and here's the interface to upload any songs to your Roll20 library. Now, since I've uploaded all of these in the past, I can go over this one, click add to game, and there we have it. If I decide I didn't actually want this song in my library, I can click delete item. I like to do a gentle clicking, like that, to do a fade in, or I bring it back down to do a fade out. We can also create something of sound effect bundles. For example, if I'm gonna go down here to the Bodak sound effect, we'll set that to loop. We'll also go ahead and add in, uh, well, you know what seems appropriate, let's add in the Bodak song. And just to round things out, why don't we add some sort of ambient track like, ooh, that one, Howling Wind. So let's say I want to run all three of these, but I don't want to have a super cluttered area. Instead, what I'll do is I'll add an empty playlist. You guessed it. I can't spell Bodak. To add this to my playlist, make sure that it was in the minus mode so it's expanded. I will grab it by this little edge, bring it up, and it's kind of finicky. But you want to get it so it looks like that, where it goes a little bit off to the right, this blue bubble. So now if I minimize that, I have a much cleaner music interface. But let's say I want all of these to play at once. Well, I've got options here. It's default set to shuffle. Click that. This is what we want. Simul play. This will play everything in the playlist at once. So now if I click play, bam. And if I want to cancel it, I don't have to do it one at a time. I can just hit the stop button or I can hit the X button up here. Other options include playing everything only once and then ending the playlist, repeating the playlist once it's over, and back to shuffle again. So let's assume you're not like me and you don't have a full music library already uploaded to Roll20. A couple options you have are you can use a probably illegal program like Media Human. I'm going to jail! With this, I would just copy something, click paste link, I find it handy to label the song before I download it to something like combat, whatever this is. And then you click your download button. 
Your downloads will go to wherever is specified in your settings. And then, once you have the downloaded file, you can just upload it right here. Alternatively, go to any of these three options that have a pre-selected library loaded with music, sound effects, anything you want. Of course, your options are going to be limited. It's handy to use the tags. So, for example, I find that the fantasy tag tends to get me what I'm looking for in D&D. Battle Bards will have a lot of spell sound effects. Incompetech has a wide variety of music that you could be using. Tabletop Audio has uh, everything from music to sound effects to all of that ambient noise in between. And it's the same procedure. Say I want to add 1920 Speakeasy to my giant campaign because I'm an idiot. I click Add to Game, and there it is. Look at that. When editing a song title, you want to click that, highlight it, and then put in whatever you're going to name it. Now, don't click off. Once you've got it named what you want, hit enter. Otherwise, it'll cancel the change when you click away. Something you can do is set it so that a certain song will automatically play when you load a page. That, in my opinion, takes some of the weight off of campaign prep. So let's use blank battle map as an example. We'll go to the settings wheel, play on load. It's down here at the bottom. And as we can see, it shows all of our tracks, our playlists. I would recommend a playlist that has some ambient noise tracks merged together under simul play. But if we go to tracks, we can set it to play bloody tears. And we load into it. Bam. It automatically starts playing the songs, which is pretty handy for ambient tracks. And that, I think, is going to wrap up some of the basics of DMing a pre-purchased campaign in Roll20, as well as using some dynamic lighting features, some API scripting, and so on and so forth. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment if you have any questions, and I hope to make more of these in the future.